Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and welcome to everybody who's popping in from all over the country and all over the world. I see we've got a liftoff on YouTube. That was a little worry for us today because a lot of my YouTube friends were telling me that YouTube was giving them all kinds of fits. So I even put a Facebook link on our YouTube channel today just in case. But I see you guys and I'm excited to have you here. And welcome to everybody who's joining us from Facebook. So I am all in gray tonight because we are celebrating the color gray. Okay, so let me just get this out of the way because I know a lot of you have been so kind and you've been uh, sending comments my way and messages and everything. I feel great. I feel fantastic. The only day that I didn't feel well after... Uh, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, I got my second COVID vaccine on Wednesday. And um, Wednesday, I was fine, felt good all day. And then uh, Thursday morning, I woke up achy, like my joints hurt in my thumbs and in my hips mostly. And I guess they might that might be places where I have a little arthritis. So I felt kind of achy and I felt really tired. I still went to work, got some things done at work, but I was just I didn't even feel like like taking a shower. I just threw my hair up in a knot and that was it. But then by the end of Thursday, I felt great and I've felt great ever since. So thank you all so much for your love and concern. So tonight here on Stampin' Chat, we are going to talk a little bit about different shades of gray. And um, oh my goodness, it's like 50 shades of gray. We don't have 50 shades, it's, that's worse than the cowboy book. We are going to talk about, we only have, let's see, five shades of gray in our collection. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And I'm going to show you all the different shades that we have and how different they actually look from one another. Sometimes it's hard to tell on the computer whether or not, you know, the gray is what you're looking for. But I'm going to show them to you here. And then we're going to use them to make a card using the brand new layering stencil bundle. You know, gray is an overlooked color. Um, sorry about that. Great. We have bad storms here. That's another thing, guys. So if the internet is iffy tonight, it's because we have super bad storms coming all the way through Milwaukee, down in Chicagoland area. It's pretty bad and stormy. Um, so gray is kind of an overlooked color. You know, it's one of those colors that I feel like I have to have in my collection, but I tend to only use it for things like wood graining. I don't stamp with it very much and I don't stencil with it enough. And it's a gorgeous color. So we're going to play with it tonight and we're going to make some magic. So let me show you some of the different grays that we have in our collection. So the first gray that I want to show you is... Um, slate. Now slate is our darkest gray and it certainly does look a lot like black until you put it next to black. So here I wanted to put it next to black so you could see the difference. It is definitely a kind of that grandpa gray, you know, that flannel gray. I just love that. It's just a warm kind of warm sweater by the fireplace kind of gray and I love it. It really is nice if you're looking for something a little bit softer than black, but it's still nice and dark. You can stamp with it, and I think you'll love it. Okay, so that is our very darkest gray. Our next gray up is Stormy Sky, and that's what we have out there right now. Now, Stormy Sky actually by itself looks like a fairly dark gray until you see it next to the slate and black, then you can see it's just a nice deep gray, but it's not too dark. Okay. Then we have our original gray, which doesn't look like gray at all when you mix it with these grays and it's moonlit fog. And moonlit fog is a really interesting gray. It's kind of similar to um, Sukuniko's London fog. It's it depends what you put with it. If you put green with this gray, it'll look very green. If you put blue with this gray, it will look very blue. But it is not a true gray. It's definitely a um, kind of, it's got that bluish undertone of a moonlit sky. That's why we called it moonlit fog. Is it background? What's that? Is it white? Background. Oh, yeah, I have a white background. I can show you on a white background. Let me see. Tom's got a mic tonight, so he should be mic'd up. Hola. 
All right, let's see. Here we go. All right, so here's a white background. And now there we go. There are the grays. I'm gonna I'm gonna position them this way so you can actually see them. That slate and black look pretty close on my screen, but I'm sure you can see the difference there. Okay, so these are four of our uh, three of our grays and black. Now we have this color, which by itself is a beautiful light gray. This one is called soft stone. But when you put it with our other grays, it almost has a little bit of a bluish undertone to it. But it is a very cool gray where um, this gray might be a little warmer, the stormy sky. This gray is a little bit on the cool side, although you can mix and match these grays together and they really look beautiful. OK, and then my final gray, which doesn't even look like gray. A lot of people will look at this and say, oh, that's white. It is not white. This is our whisper. And you can see it here. It almost looks a little ivory in this picture, but it's definitely a gray. Now, whisper matches our amalgam ink. This is one of our amalgam ink colors. But what a lot of people don't know about our amalgam ink is you can stencil with our amalgam ink with no problem. And when it dries, it is beautiful. So here are the matching colors. We have amalgam ink in Whisper, and then we have Soft Stone, Stormy Sky, Slate, Moonlit Fog, and of course, Black. So this is what we're going to be playing tonight. Yes, whis Whisper looks like concert, Debbie? I'm not sure what that is. But it is definitely a really, really light gray. And you know what I love to use Whisper for? I like to take like our water droplet stencil or this the uh, sassy stripes and just do a real gentle inking for a background. It almost appears like texture instead of color. Yeah, it but it is a gray and you'll you'll see like when when it stamps and you have it at home, you'll see it is almost a um you know, it does look kind of greenish until you see it next to skeleton leaves. Skeleton leaves is our palest green and you can see that almost looks like a yellow here. But let me let me just ink up a piece of cardstock so you can see the difference here. Okay? So, here is Whisper. You see that? I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Whisper's a great ink for no line coloring. And then skeleton leaves, which is our really, really pale green, almost looks a little bit yellow there. When that dries, it dries up really, really pale. So amalgam ink, I have never tried it on fabric. It is very similar to a hybrid ink. Um, so if you can use a hybrid ink on fabric, then you definitely can use it on fabric, but I've never tried it and I don't want to swear to it. So I'm going to leave it at that. All right. So let's get into some stenciling. If you're getting a blurry picture on YouTube, try going out and going back in. It could be storms. It could be YouTube. I also pinned a comment over on YouTube in the chat for where we are over on Facebook. So if you're really struggling with YouTube tonight, you can join us over on Facebook. So amalgam ink is an ink that you can use with um, watercolor. You can use it with colored pencils and Gamsol, and you can use it with Copic markers. So it is an ink that can be used with just about any coloring medium at all, and all three at the same time. Our dye ink can be used with Copic markers and it can be used with Gamsol, but it runs like crazy with watercolor. So if you want one ink that does it all, and now a lot of people are doing mixed media where they will color with Copics and add some colored pencil and Gamsol, and then they'll watercolor around the background. So amalgam ink is great and it comes in six colors. It comes in Whisper, which is a light gray, it comes in skeleton leaves, which is a super pale green if you like to paint a lot of foliage, things like that. It comes in something called barely there that is truly barely there. It's a pink, but it's barely there. It's almost like a like a real light skin tone. Um, and then there's warm glow, which is a darker 
almost like a darker skin tone, but not a super dark skin tone, like a medium skin tone. Then we have chocolate truffle and we have obsidian. All right, so if you get amalgam ink on your Misty, just use a little bit of Gina K Design Stamp Cleaner and that will take it right off. You can also probably use a little bit of hand sanitizer and it'll come right off. All right, so let's get to making a card. So the stencils I'm using tonight are um, the brand new bundle, stencil bundle called A Little Hello. And I'm gonna start with the top the number one stencil. And these are all numbered one, two, three, and four. I'm going to just tape this down. I'm only going to use one flower for this card tonight. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess changing the quality over on YouTube of the video can help with the blurriness. It's probably just, um, it has to do with how quickly your I don't know, your download speed is at home with your internet. And of course, 7 p.m., that's like the most popular time to be on the internet. So probably everybody in your area is sucking up the internet too. Okay, so when I do this particular technique, I like to pick a flower that gives me a little bit of room to die cut. So I'm going to use this one because these here have these baby flowers really close. I could also use this one, either this one or this one. I don't know if you can see that. Let me show you that way. So these have the little flowers here really close to the edge and I'm gonna die cut this flower out when I'm done. So I'm gonna use one that doesn't have a baby flower really close. So the first color that I'm going to use is soft stone. So I'm gonna use a blending brush with this and I wanna show you a, a nifty little tool. A friend of mine has a fun Etsy shop. Her name is Brienne and she sells these. And these are, her shop is called the Ink Stand Shop. And this is the coolest thing. She has them for inks like ours. She has them for ink cubes, like this one here. And she has them for distress inks, which I'm going to get because I love distress inks. And what this does is they have these cool little rubber feet on the bottom. And you can pop your ink pad in there and then you can put your lid in there and it holds your ink pad steady. So, you know, you can ink up your brush with your other hand being free. So if you're holding something down, you don't have to let go to hold on to your ink pads. Plus you don't get your fingers all inky because you're not touching the pad. So I had to try this and it's really a lot of fun to use. So I wanted to share that with you and I will link her store in the description here on YouTube. It's called the Ink Pad Shop, I think. Ink Pad Shop or Ink Pad Store. Let me look real quick. I I saved it, so hopefully I have it somewhere. Um, let's see, just so you know, the Ink Pad. It's called the Ink Stand shop, ink stand shop. Oh my goodness, I'm so bad with names. Can't even remember my kids' names. Okay, so now I'm gonna start with soft stone and I'm gonna put it right in the center of this flower. And I'm gonna go kind of light and get that ink out toward the edges. And you see how the ink is just grabbing right along the edges of the stencil? I love that because that already creates a lot of cool shaded depth for you. And remember, Gina K Designs inks have a smoothing agent in them. And that means that it'll look a little bit darker when you put it on and it might even look a little bit fuzzy or a little bit kind of just not super smooth. But when it dries, it dries like it's airbrushed. That's the smoothing agent in it. Okay, so you can see how pretty that looks. Now we're gonna go right in with a second color. We're gonna do a little bit, let me get this one out of the way. I actually bought a couple of these, so when I'm using multiple colors, I can use them at the same time. I have another one over here. Okay, yes, this stencil, we're going to sell, eventually we'll sell the stencils out of the bundles and the dies out of the bundles. But while they're available in a bundle, they're only available in a bundle, if that makes sense. Now I'm gonna use, this is slate. I don't wanna use slate. I wanna use stormy sky next, okay? 
And I'm gonna add a little bit of Stormy Sky just in the center. So I'm going right over that spot in the center and then I'm just gonna darken that up a little bit in the center just to accent around the center there. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do with that. And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do the leaves as well with these colors. Okay, so let's take this stencil off and see how it looks. Oh, it is May is wear gray for brain cancer awareness. Jody, I didn't know that. Oh, I feel I feel like we're I feel like I'm making a difference right now. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, so now I'm gonna use layer two and I'm gonna just put that right on there. Make sure it looks like it's lined up pretty well, and I'm gonna tape that down. Now, another thing that I want to explain to you is with the die set. So the die set has a die that cuts out the vine. So there's a vine here, and you'll see that when I ink that up. In fact, I'll ink that up now so you can see it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start with a little soft stone on this vine here. I'm going to use this one right here. Get that vine. So this vine, there's a couple different vines in this stencil. Some of them go in this direction and some of them go in the opposite direction. So if you want to cut it out with the die, make sure you're inking up the one that matches the die and you can just check it with your die first. Okay, so I've got that color down. I'm also going to do some of these leaves in that same soft stone. Okay. And I'm going to do a bunch of them because I really, really want um, to have some, a lot of greenery on this one, but it's not greenery, it's grayery. <laughs> just seen the look I just got from Tom. <laughs> grayery. 50 shades of grayery. All right, now we're going to go with the darkest, which is the slate. I'm going to put this in my ink stand holder and I'm going to ink this up and now I'm going to put slate into these lines on this one. Now slate is pretty close to black so I'm going to use a light hand but remember when it dries it's going to dry up a little bit lighter than black but I want to add that in there and I'm going to stamp black right in the center. Okay, so now let's take this off. I'm keeping my slate pad available. Oh, isn't that cool? Oh, I love that. Who's eye rolling at me? <laughs> Sean, I don't blame you. Tom eye rolled too. You just couldn't see him. <laughs> I do make up words. Okay, so now I'm going to use the last stencil. And I am only going to use this on these leaves, so I'm not worried about the flower lining up too much. I'm just getting the leaves ready over here. Okay, and we're going to go with this dark color again. <laughs> this is the sequel to the cowboy book. <laughs> Six Shades of Grey by Gina Kay. <laughs> All right, we're going with... Should we go with slate or should we, let's do stormy sky for this. I'm gonna do stormy sky. Okay, so it's not quite as dark. All right, and I'm getting all that in there. You know, it's fun to use these stencils in non-traditional flower and leaf colors. It really is. It kind of stretches your imagination a little bit, you know, do one in all different shades of aqua or do one in all different shades of pink. It's so pretty and it's so different and it really, it's just kind of, kind of eye catching. All right. So we've got that second layer of leaves on there. Ooh, they're pretty. Isn't this neat? Okay. So Let's take a look at that up close so you guys can see. So we've got the flower there. That flower almost has a silver, silverness to it, doesn't it? Love that. 
and it's neat because it's it's all grayscale and it's very um because of the way that it's faded, it's not stamped in gray. It's it's faded because of the stencil. It does appear to have that shine that silver would have if you used silver. I, I love that. It's pretty cool. All right, so I'm gonna get some black ink now and wish me luck here because I'm gonna stamp this center into that flower. And yes, Gina is changing brushes for each one of these. I am. I am changing brushes. I have extra brushes for my grays here. Now, if you don't have extra brushes, work from light to dark. Do all your lights, light parts first, then do all your medium parts, and then do all your dark parts. And then when you're done, take your brush and get your tidy towel. If you don't have a tidy towel, get like a soft cloth of some kind and wet it, something you're willing to ruin. And then take the brush and rub it over the towel and get most of the ink off. It's gonna stain your brush. Don't worry about that. Stained brush is a loved brush. Um, and then once that's done, you can rub it off on a paper towel. I'm using a piece of craft cardstock here, but then here's a little washcloth that I use you can rub it off on that to dry it. And then you could see, I mean, it's not, it's not really transferring ink anymore. See? So these bristles are made of a plastic, so they're kind of easy to clean. But every once in a while, the ink builds up so much that you're going to want to wash them at the sink. When you do, use cool water, maybe just tepid, like not necessarily warm or hot, with a little bit of baby shampoo or a kind of a low sudsing shampoo. You can use dish detergent if you want. Um, I think I like uh, maybe a little laundry detergent more than dish detergent now that I've been playing with it a little bit because it doesn't seem as like bubbly. And then after you rinse them, lay them down face down on the paper towel. Don't lay them this way to dry because this is this head of this brush is glued into the casing. And if you lay it this way to dry, the water pools into the glue and it weakens the glue. If you lay it this way, it pulls right away from the back and right onto your paper towel and um, it'll preserve the head of the brush. But you don't need to clean them very much like that. I'm using white card stock tonight. My, my card's gonna be black, white, and gray. Do the brushes ruin the ink pads? No, they do not. I've been using blending brushes now for years and I still have the same ink pads and they are still working beautifully. So it will not ruin them at all. When you get our blending brushes, you will be surprised how soft these bristles are. They are super, super soft. Oh, the ink stand, you found it on Etsy and they're sold out. Do they have a wait list? If you like the idea of it, get on the wait list. And I will still link it here. So this way, um, you can you know find it later if you're if you're not in the market for it right now. Okay, I'm gonna ink this stamp up with some black onyx and I'm gonna hope for the best. I'm gonna get my curly crazy head in the way here and I'm gonna stamp it. There we go, not bad, not too bad. It's really not hard to stamp this these stamps, um, but you can use the Misty if you are very, very, you know, you really want it to be absolutely spot on perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little bit of cutting. Boy, do you think, do you think if I went back over this because of that black and I added just a little bit of black on the tips that that would accentuate it a little bit more? I think I'm gonna try it, guys. Bear with me. Oh, Brienne, you're not on Etsy anymore? Oh, thank you for sharing your website. Okay, so Brienne, the owner of the Ink Stand Shop is here. They have their own website now and she is sharing her link. So you can see it in the comments. Are you on YouTube? Um, oh, okay, uh, Karen is sharing it on Facebook and I think Brienne might've shared it here on YouTube. And I will find that link and I will also share it in the description, so, okay. So now we're going to add a little bit. I don't know if I should add black or slate. I think I'm going to add, add slate because I'm a scaredy cat here. So let's get, let's get a little slate going. 
And we're just going to add a little bit. So I'm going to ink up the very tip of this blending brush because I don't want to go very far in. And I'm just going to angle it and just get a little bit near the bottom. Okay. Because I don't want it to be all that color. Oh, yeah. I think this is going to be, excuse my elbow if it's in the way. But I think this is what I was looking for here. Okay. Here we go. A little bit there. A little bit there. And a little bit up there. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Okie dokie. Oh, yeah. See, now it's popping even more. And I think that's going to make a big difference when we, um, when we mount this card all together. Okay, so we're gonna die cut these out and then we're gonna cut a black word out. We're gonna cut the hello die out as well. All right, but before we do that, I really think that this card lends itself to wood graining. And of course I wanna use gray for my wood graining to give it kind of that beachy kind of wood feel. Amanda, I will, um, Brianne is in watching and she's going to share her link. I'm going to ask her to share her link again if she's still watching to her inkstand shop. But I will also be posting it in my, um, in my description here on YouTube. So if you miss it in the comments, don't worry. Once, I, once I'm done going live, I will add it. Okay, so I feel like this piece of paper is crooked. So I'm just going to cut this a little big to get a good... Uh, straight edge. Now I'm going to cut this at five inches and then I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it at four and three quarter inches. Actually, I'm going to make this a little smaller, four and three quarter inches by three and a half inches. Okay. And then we're going to do a little bit of wood graining here. Now I feel like we could start with, let's start with a little soft stone. Before we do that, let's add some score lines into this. So I'm going to get my score buddy and I'm going to score these. These are going to be wide planks. I'm going to score them on the half inch because this is a three and a half inch, um, uh, three and a half inch piece of cardstock going across. Sari, I know, um, I don't carry the ink pad in my store, the ink stand in my store. I do carry ink pads. Some of them are out of stock, but I don't carry this item in my store. But Brianne is in the group. And Brianne, if you could share it one more time just so people can see it. Um, I think she's on Facebook and on YouTube, but I'm not sure. She probably has two windows open. All right. So this is a three and a half inch card panel. I'm going to score it at three. I'm going to score it at two and a half. I'm going to score it at two. And this is layering weight, the Gina K Designs white layering weight cardstock, one and a half. And then this is getting too close for me to feel comfortable. So I like to flip it over. And then the last one is at the two inch mark. So I'm going to go up to two and a half and then up to three. And that gives me even half inch planks. Now I know that um, that you can't see that really well, but you'll be able to see it when I get the ink on there. So I'm going to start with soft stone just to lay some color down on this. Okay. This is a nice soft color. Gives it that beachy, almost whitewashed look. I like that. Maybe a little more up there. Okay. This technique is much easier to do with a rectangular or square ink pad because um, it's got that nice sharp edge along. Okay. And then we're going to add just a little stormy sky. Not a lot, just a little bit. So I'm going super light handed with it just to add a little bit. See, I'm kind of adding those dark streaks in there almost like making the wood look a little more aged in spots. Very light. Like I am th the equivalent of just breathing on this piece of cardstock. 
<laughs> Imagine I'm whispering in its ear with the ink pad. And that gives me two colors. So you'll be able to see that when I hold it up a little bit closer. Can you see that? Okay. It's such a nice background technique. I'm, I'm glad, Krista, that you're addicted to this technique because it is such a nice technique. It works well for any kind of card. It gives you just that soft little background that you need. All right, and I'm gonna cut this piece of cardstock down one eighth of an inch smaller. You can also use your Master Layouts 2 dies for this if you want the stitching in there. But since I've already started with the paper cutter, I'm going to go from my three and a half inch mark where I was up one eighth of an inch and cut. And then I'm going to turn that and go to my four and three quarters of an inch mark and go up to the seven eighths of an inch mark. Okay. I'm loving the grays. Let's turn this over and have a fresh look here. Okay, so I'm going to adhere these two panels together. It's kind of a damp piece of cardstock right now, so I used a little extra tape. And there we go. There's my nice little edge. You just pull that up and turn it just a little bit that way. There we go. Okay, so there we go. All righty. Now we're going to pick a background card color here, and I am leaning very, very much toward Stormy Sky. Not slate. I feel like slate is too dark. I really like stormy sky against this. And I think it's going to make the flowers pop out more because I'm going to be using a white oval in here as well. So let me cut this down on my big cutter over here for just a quick second. I hate to be off the screen for any large amount of time, but I like my big cutter for this because I want this to be a tent fold, tent style card. Okay, so I am going to score this at five and a half inches. This is a four and a quarter by 11 oop, inch piece of cardstock. And then I scored it at five and a half. And if that ever happens where you score outside of the line, you could flatten it back out using your scoring tool. Okay, there we go. Now this probably would also look really great on a white card base. So I am going to just take one piece of white and score it just so we can look at it on both. Cause at the very end, we all might decide that it needs to be on white. And I, uh, I will agree with you. And this one is a side fold card. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, my, I don't know if you're talking about my hair, but my hair is a little bit of a crazy mess right now. I've got some hair loss issues going on from, I think, from some anesthesia that I had, but I'm not 100% sure. Starting to wonder, too, if it might be the COVID vaccine, but I don't know. But either way, I'm good because I want to be healthy. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to stamp one of the greetings here. Let's see. Should I stamp it on black or should I stamp it on white? I think I should probably stamp it on black because I'm going to be putting it on white. So let's try that. So, um, hello, how have you been? Hello, hope you're doing well. Hello, I really miss you. Let's do hope you're doing well. I have so many people to send this one to. Oh, I finally sent out a bunch of cards that I've been meaning to send. Um, do you ever just, gosh, you know, life gets so busy and you want to send all these cards out and you're, you just get so busy. I'm really, really, I'm, I'm actually thinking it would be really fun to do this little challenge. I might do this challenge and I don't know if you guys would like to do it too. So, you know how, I mean, we pretty much don't go anywhere these days, right? Well, maybe we we're going a little, a few more places now, but I thought it would be really fun to just make some generic cards that just say hello, like the one I'm making tonight. Um, and then 
sign them saying, I'm giving this card to you because you have a beautiful smile, or I'm giving this card to you because you have a friendly face. Um, you know, just kind of something very, very generic and, you know, hope you have a wonderful day and just randomly giving those cards to people. Don't you think that that would be so much fun? Sorry if the camera went out for a sec, guys. Um, we're still here. So wouldn't that be so much fun to like, you're in the grocery store and maybe you see, you know, a senior citizen that's alone or whatever. And maybe nobody's really talking to him or her. And, um, you just walk up to them and say, here, I have a card for you and just hand them the card and don't say anything else and just let them open the card, you know, at their leisure. Oh, I think that would be, that would really brighten some days. And that's what the world needs right now. It needs people like us to get out there and do what we do and make people happy. All right, so I used a little of the Gina K Designs Fine Detail White Powder. I'm gonna just brush away the excess here. I used Versamark ink, but I am really digging the white ink pad for this. I'm gonna think, I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna do another one. Let's erase that. <laughs> I'm gonna do another one with the white ink pad because I feel like it just fills in all the gaps. Now, I think our white ink pads are sold out, but I think we have cubes. And so I'll use a white cube because I think that's easier on these greetings anyway. This is our little white ink cube. Here's the greeting. I think that'd be really fun. Um, I've been talking a lot about my weight loss and I plan on doing a live. I'm going to try to do one like in the middle of the day, maybe just from work on my iPhone and just talk a little bit about my, my weight loss plan and how I did it and stuff like that. And somebody was asking me, you know, what advice do I have and stuff like that. And I, I said, I am not a doctor. So, you know, if you have health issues, make sure you talk to your doctor. Don't just use my advice. Um, because you gotta, you gotta make sure that you listen to a doctor. And then I realized that even though I'm not a doctor, I am a cardiologist. Whoa. <laughs> Card eologist. You get it? Card. All right. Never mind. Tom, can you get a drum set so you can go? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I'm plugging in my heat tool. <laughs> yeah, I should leave on a high note. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Okay, so yes, Lisa, Tom actually face palmed off to the side. He sounded a lot more interested than I think he really was. <laughs> All right, I see a spot there that I wanna get off before I completely heat this so I don't have to scrape it off later. So sometimes I just take my craft pick if it's really close to the word and just scrape it. There we go, okay. All right, we're gonna heat it up. I think we should all get business cards that say our name. Like, I'm Gina Krupski, cardiologist, but C A R D dash cardiologist. All right. Oh, yeah, looking good. I do like it better with the white ink cube, I gotta admit. It just looks more solid. Okay. So now. What are we doing? We're gonna start die cutting and I'm gonna cut this out with one of our labels dies too. I don't know which one yet. And if this, if I don't like the way it looks, I'm going back in, you're going with me. So don't leave. We're gonna do it on white if it doesn't look good. All right, let me back up just a little bit so that I can get die cutting machine in here. And we're gonna die cut this. Now this is kind of big but it fits because it's a six by six piece of cardstock. I like to start with the six by six so it matches the size of the stencil, but you don't need to do that. If you tape your cardstock down, you can place the stencil anywhere you want. Okay, so there is a right way and a wrong way for this die because there are like more pointed petals and then more rounded petals, but all the pointed ones are the same and all the rounded ones are the same. So once you figure out which 
loop is pointed and you get it where you want it, you'll be fine. Jill would like to know what crafting things you bring camping with you. What do I bring camping with me? Oh, that's easy. Okay, so what I bring is I usually bring um, two or three stamp sets that I really want to color, like images that I really want to color and things that I need to die cut. So I don't bring any die cutting stuff, but things that will be die cut. And then I bring several sheets of my layering weight cardstock. I usually bring either a black amalgam pad or a black onyx ink pad. And I bring my colored pencils and my gamsaw and some blending stumps. And I just sit out by the fire and I color images all weekend. And then I bring them home and I cut them out and then they're ready to turn into cards. So you can see how that looks. Pretty, pretty. Look how nice that looks just up against that wood. I love that. Okay. Yeah, so I only take that. I don't take much because I can keep busy coloring the whole weekend. Um, and then all of those images are ready to be die cut and added to cards. And that's, you know, kind of the bulk of the work is the coloring, right? All right, so we're going to cut this one out here. And yes, it's true. I could cut more than one, but I, this is precision cutting, baby. Okay. <laughs> Yes, we are in camping season. Tom and I like to camp. We've got a tiny little RV. And when I say tiny, it's tiny, right, hon? It's, it's the perfect size for two people. We have taken Alicia with us, and, and it works, but it is really the perfect size for just the two of us. Tiny. We can, like, just drive it into town to go to the grocery store. It's not like a big one that you set up, and once you set it up, you can't unset it up. <laughs> And I love it. It's really, really fun. Okay. So I'm really making a mess with my old purple tape here. The new purple tape does not tear the paper. Like this is tearing the paper. All right. This one might be a little close, but we'll see. I can still make it work because I can tuck one underneath the other one. And I play guitar while you're coloring. Yes, that's right. Tom plays guitar while I color, and we sit, and we... So the fire gets out of hand. <laughs> Sometimes. Every once in a while, right? There's the little leaf there. That looks okay. That worked. All right, and then the other two are the opposite leaf, so let me get that die. You live in Egg Harbor. Is that Egg Harbor, New Jersey? I've been to Egg Harbor, New Jersey. Is there an Egg Harbor here in Wisconsin, Tom? Yes, oh. Is. Oh. I know we have lots of friends that join us here during our lives from Wisconsin. And Wisconsin is, it's a fantastic state. It's beautiful here. And in the summer, it is probably one of the most spectacular places in the country. Everything just gets lush and green. And if you're in Milwaukee area, Lake, Michigan is absolutely beautiful, except when it's storming and our camera goes out. Um, but uh, in the winter, it's cold. I'm not a I'm not a Wisconsin fan in the winter because I don't do any winter sports. My winter sport is stamping. That's what I do in the winter. <laughs> yes, we go to Door County. I love, love it up there. It's beautiful. They have a taco place there that I had a taco at. I don't know what I was thinking. I heard it was amazing. And who buys one taco? I do. I bought one taco and then we drove it home and I ate my one stupid taco and it was the best taco I ever had in my life. And I wanted eight tacos. I, who buys one taco? That's so stupid. Um, but it's right in downtown in Door County. All right, so I'm gonna cut this hello die and I'm getting just a small piece of black card stock to do that. This might be too small, we'll see. Okay, I'm placing it blade side up 
and I'm placing it off to the side and I'm really cutting it close here. So hopefully I didn't cut that piece too short. Oh my goodness, what is happening? Why am I struggling with this small piece of cardstock? Why don't I just use a bigger piece? It's the principle of the thing now. Um, Pamela, I will add the link after I'm done the live tonight to the ink pad, to the ink stand shop. Um, I can't do it while I'm actually live. I can't edit the video, but I will edit it right afterwards and add everything. I always add like what colors I used. So if you guys are ever wondering um, like what color grays I'm using tonight or what color colored pencils I use, after the lives, I always put those details in. So um, I'll go back over there and do that right after the live. So there is my hello. That's so pretty. Shout out to Lori, Lori Bus. Hey, Lori. <laughs> the, is it Mojo Rosa? Mojo Rosa. Hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to cut a couple of ovals here. I'm going to cut a, should I use a real big one? No. I'm going to use a smaller oval. So I'm going to cut this oval. This is the medium size oval. These are the two die sets, the double stitched and the single stitch. The single stitch ones are a little bit bigger. I'm going to cut that one. I think the medium are going to be plenty big enough for what I want to do. Yeah, you can stamp them ahead of time. Just stamp a whole bunch of images. Um, and then take them with you. And then you don't even have to worry about stamps and ink and all of that. And I'll tell you, you know, don't stress too much. Because if you're just going away for a week weekend, you think you're going to color a million things. But I only ever color about three or four the whole time. Because, you know, you're stopping to drink a beer. And then you're going to go on a bike ride. And then you've got to go do things out there when you're camping, take a hike. So really, you know, it's a little bit of coloring here, a little bit of coloring there. Okay, so this is the medium double-stitched oval, and those two nest together perfectly to give you that little shadow layer that's going to coordinate with the one that I cut. And then the last component here that I'm going to die cut is the hope you're doing well, but now I'm second-guessing myself, and I'm not sure that I want to go with this. I think I'm going to go with white, and I'm going to stamp the image in black. So I'm going to do that real quickly. Just let me grab my ink pad and I got to clean the white ink. I know I went through all of that and I just, I'm very indecisive when I'm stamping. And as things start to unfold, I, I make different decisions along the way. So, okay. So I just stamped it real quick with black ink. And we are going to cut that out using one of the flag dies. So I think I'm going to use dies from Master Layouts 3. Tracy I'm... can't picture you drinking a beer. You can't picture me drinking a beer? Oh, that's because we always talk about my fruit salad. That's what you picture me drinking, right? My sangria. <laughs> um, I actually like beer, but I like very light beer. I drink beer that most people would say that's not beer. Like I drink Michelob Ultra, which is pretty much just kind of yellow colored water. Um, and I Miller Lite, that's about it. I. It's refreshing. There's nothing like an ice cold beer on a hot day, right? Come on. All right. I know I maybe I don't appear as a beer girl, but I like beer. You know who else likes a good beer? I'm going to tattletale. My friend Jennifer McGuire, she and I both like a good beer, and we have had a good beer together <laughs> on an occasion or two. All right, so there we go. Now I'm going to cut this out. Don't tell her I told you. Ugh. Everybody's going over to Jennifer's page right now. <laughs> Gina K told me to drink beer. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I've cut that out using that flag die. And now, <laughs> Cindy, Cindy, I'm in Miller Country here. This is uh this is where it all happens in Wisconsin. Miller. I know it is embarrassing. If you're a real beer drinker and you like the kind of thick hop hoppy kind of taste. 
Tom's not a big fan of the beers that I like either. All right. But I don't know. <laughs> People will say that it's be I drink those beers because I don't like beer. <laughs> it's not even really beer. So now we have to decide what color we're going to do. But first, we before we do the card base, let's do the whole card layout here. So I'm going to start by layering these two panels together. And I'm not stamping anything on this oval. And I think sometimes we forget that ovals and rectangles and squares and circles that we have in our collection, we don't always need to stamp on them. We can just use them as grounding pieces, as frames, as kind of a, a centering area on our card that we can add decorative items. So we're gonna have the hello like going right across like that. And then we'll have, hope you're doing well down here at the bottom. See, we really needed that to be in white to contrast with the hello. We'll put the hello like that. And then we're gonna do the flower. So we'll put the flower here and then we'll have a vine coming down here. And we're gonna put a little leaf up here. And then we've got these two leaves. We can kind of spread those out like that and tuck them right under here like that. So what do you think of that layout? Is that kind of cool? All right. Very cool. <laughs> okay. So let's... Um, Let's do the leaves. Let's get the oval on there first, because I know what I'm doing here. We're going to get the oval on there first. We need the oval to be up a little bit high. Wait, the Bible says you can't drink? Did yeah. you see that? You can't get drunk. You can't get drunk. Oh, get okay. Drunk. All right, because I am pretty sure that I read in the Bible that Jesus turned water into wine. And I'm thinking he'd be super fun to have at a party. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, I don't get drunk. I usually have a beer. And the reason why I only have one beer, I'm just like Karen. I only have one beer because um, I get a headache. I don't, I get the hangover before I get feeling tipsy at all. So I don't like the way that feels. So I have one beer for the refreshment and then the rest, I just let it go. All right. So does I, our, does our Gita have a website? Arjita has a blog. Yeah. Yeah. You can head over to Arjita's blog. If you go to GinaKDesigns.com, um, we have um, under About Us, we have all of our illustrators and um, the people that work for our company, Karen and Kathy and Mindy. Um, they are part of our video team and our moderation team. We have their websites all listed, their Instagrams, their Facebooks, their Pinterest, YouTube channels. And you can find all that information just by going right there to our website. So click on the About Us. Actually, I think you just have to hover over it and there's a drop down. And um, all that information will come out. So Gina. Yes. That is a really cool card. Yes. Uh, if you were going to sneak a non-gray color in there. What color would I pick? Just to give it a... A know, little pizzazz, a, a little shade. something else. What? Yeah, what would you do? I think I would use something like Innocent Pink. Just a little, a little uh, pop of pink. Maybe a little pop of teal because I think teals and pinks because of the coolness of the colors I think that they're just beautiful with gray yes Annette a little red too would be perfect okay so I'm going to pop this up with some foam squares but first I'm going to tape this down right down here near the bottom yes red is always elegant with gray totally okay so we'll get this all the colors are coming in all the colors yeah, well, you know, I mean, they're they're not wrong. <laughs> they're right. It all looks good. 
I think that little pop of color, like if you wanted to, you could just do a big rhinestone or something in the center instead in a color, and that would really be beautiful. All right, I'm gonna put a couple of foam squares on the back here. Well, don't unfriend me because I, I have a beer every now and then. I'm not a bad person. <laughs> I'm a good person. <laughs> right, Tom? That's right. Every once in a while, girl's got to let her hair down. But that second beer, watch out. Yeah, no. No. And I'm not fun when I have the second beer because I just want to go to sleep. So one beer, nurse it all night, the end. All right, I'm going to pop this up right here like that. Okay, now, here we go. Now we're gonna find out where to put the hello. So the hello can go up over things. I got glue right there. Let me rub that off. If you get any um, adhesive anywhere, you can always just rub it off with your mono sand eraser. That'll take care of that. Get you it. used that on my back last week, didn't you? The, the mono sand eraser. <laughs> It's still a little bit sore. A little rough. Okay, and we're going to pop that right on top, but we're going to do it with Connect Glue. And you guys know I like to squirt Connect Glue out onto the cardstock. Oh, and our glue holders are back in stock. I know a lot of you were waiting for these to come back in stock. See the cap? It holds the cap in there, so you never lose your cap. And it makes it real easy to get the cap off because this is very ergonomic the way you hold it. And this is a very inexpensive little stand, but I love it. It keeps the glue in the right position. Love it. Okay, so I'm just going to tap my finger on this and just get a little bit of glue on the back of this. It's because it's so delicate that I don't use the glue right out of the, um, the tube, but you can. You just have to be a little bit careful. And don't worry if you get glue on the front this glue goes on white, but it dries clear, so you won't have any problems with that once it dries. Okie dokie. So we're going to have the hello just dip down onto the flag. Once we get it in place, then we're not going to worry. We're going to just attach it. It can look like it's suspended. It's totally fine. There we go. Okay. Now we have to decide on what color we're going to put this on. So let me get another piece of craft here that doesn't have glue all over it. And now, do you like it on the gray? Is that too dark? Okay, that's one. This is like the eye doctor. One or two. Okay, one or two. I got to go white. I gotta say white, come on, please be with me with white. <laughs> Everybody say white. Look at the way that pops with the white. Didn't all the grays just come out? I feel like when you have it on the gray, then it's just a lot of gray. But the when the white comes out. The white comes out, yeah, but look at that. Look at all that. Oh, people are torn, okay. Well, I see a few more white choices than gray choices. So I think we're going to go with the uh, white. I'm making the executive decision here. There's a lot of white. There's okay. All right. Requests. A lot of people are good with the white card base. All right. Here we go. Okie dokie. All right. So there is my finished card. Now, remember, I always take really high quality pictures of these cards and post them on our Facebook page, in our Facebook group, and on my community tab over here on YouTube, for those of you that are watching on YouTube. So everybody can see the high quality photo because I know the lives, it's, it's pretty good, but sometimes it can get a little blurry here and there. And so... Yeah, so I'm going to post a real high quality picture of this with my gray brush laying to the side looking all cute like that. <laughs> I'll stage it now for you. Oh, I hope you like that. I really love this card. I think gray, grays are a lot of fun. 
All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed tonight's video and I hope that you'll give this card technique a try. Try the grays, try that monochromatic look, the neutrals. Another option for this kind of card, if you're more of a warm tone person, use like craft, sandy beach, dark chocolate, warm cocoa, and stick with all craft in the background. That would be beautiful too. And that would be the same kind of feel, but just the warmer tones. You could even do a beautiful wood grain with those colors. So try it both ways and see which one you like the best. Well, everybody, we will be back on Thursday afternoon. I'm trying to get a special guest to join me because uh, it's always more fun. And we'll be playing once again with this layering stencil bundle. Now we are getting low on this bundle, but we still have inventory left. So if you didn't get it yet and you think this is one that you'd like to play with, head over to GinaKDesigns.com, click on the What's New tab and grab your bundle while they're still available. How about the other bundle? The other bundle should be back by, I'm thinking that second week of May. That's what we were planning for. And I think that the stamp sets that we were waiting for for that bundle have finally shipped. So we're looking about the second week of May, same with the blending brushes. So stay tuned because that's all coming back in stock very, very soon. All right, you guys, I'm gonna take off for the night. Thank you guys all so much for joining me. Uh, I'll be back again on Thursday for a lunchtime live. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all so very much and I'll see you again mwah, real soon. Bye-bye.